Hello, everybody. It's great to be back here. I was indeed a, uh, one of you one of, uh, not so long ago. Um, 1973 was when I graduated. So it's especially nice to be back here. And I am, I'm, I'm delighted to have a chance to share what I have learned about what we're doing to our oceans. And I think it'll be interesting to you. I'm going to tell you five things that I think will surprise you. The first and amazing and disappointing fact is that you can't forget about the oceans. And in the 20 years, well within our lifetimes, we're going to find out whether we wreck them or not. Why do we know the oceans are in trouble? Two years ago, scientists went out and they counted the big fish, the big predator fish, the, the marlins, the swordfish, the uh, tunas. These are like the lions and the tigers of the deep. These are the big predators that roam far and wide. They counted the top 25 of these big species. They discovered that only 10% of them are left compared to 50 years ago. There's 90% of those fish are gone. And that's just since 1950. Imagine how many more fish there were before we started industrialized fishing. Second thing, and here's some good news. The, the life in the ocean isn't equally distributed. Most of the really valuable ecosystems are coastal. That's because the water's shallow. Light shines there, stuff grows, there's nutrients from the bottom. Why is that good news? Why is that good news? Good news is that in the 1970s, for reasons that had nothing to do with fish, and I'm going to ask you to think for a second what that reason might be, the United States changed its mind. And after more than almost 200 years of saying nations only control 12 miles of the ocean, we declared that we now had 200 miles. And we made the 200 miles off of our coast national territory, no different than Pennsylvania or New Jersey. And guess what? The worlds of the nation, the other nations of the world immediately followed suit. Now, why did, why did we do that in the 70s? It had nothing to do with the fish. The answer is oil. We discovered that we could drill for oil out in the ocean. And so now you can save the oceans by passing national laws. Third thing I want to say. Most people think, and if I asked everybody in this room what the biggest problem facing the oceans is, most of you would say, probably pollution. Probably oil pollution. Maybe tanker wrecks or something like that. And pollution is a big problem, but it's a hard problem to fix. Because the sources of it are dispersed, and the sources of it are built into the economic system that we depend on. Fixing that is not easy. The thing that's going to wreck the oceans in the next 20 years is commercial fishing. And this is a solvable problem. We're basically taking too many fish out of the ocean too fast. And we're, and, and we're doing it in a very destructive and short-sighted way. Let me tell you the fourth thing you might be surprised to learn. You probably have heard about fish farms. And so you'd say to yourself, great, fish farms will be part of the answer. Instead of taking too many fish from the wild, let's create some fish farms, and that'll help supply the food that we need. Here's the surprising thing. Most of the fish that you buy that's farmed, and most everybody here has probably had more than once, salmon fillets made in a fish farm. Salmon eat fish. Salmon are carnivorous fish. They don't eat vegetable protein. They eat fish. So every time you establish a fish farm, you're establishing a new customer for wild fish. And in fact, the conversion ratio is about three to one. It takes three pounds of wild caught fish to, to make one pound of farmed salmon. So when you buy a farmed salmon, you're not reducing the pressure on the wild fishery. You're actually contributing to it. Last thing I want to just say that's kind of a surprise is lots of people feel like fish are healthy to eat. And we all get told, eat as much fish as you can. It's better than uh, fatty or other, other fattier foods. And a lot of fish is good to eat, and you should eat some fish. But here's an important fact. In, 19, in 2004, just a couple of years ago, the United States Food and Drug Administration put out a warning. And it applies to you. If you're a kid, or you're a woman of childbearing age, 
the federal government says, do not eat swordfish, do not eat more tuna fish, albacore tuna, than six ounces a week. That's about one sandwich. Don't eat more than six ounces of tuna, albacore tuna, a week if you're a woman of childbearing age or a kid. So just about everybody in this room is covered by this warning. This is no Oceana speaking, this is the FDA. Now why is that warning out there? Mercury. There's mercury in the fish. And mercury is a neurotoxin. And if you get too much of it in your body, it will affect your fetal development, the fetal development of a baby. It'll affect your own mental ability to focus. It can affect your memory. It can give you tremors. So it's a serious health risk, and you need to know about that, and more people need to know about it. Most people would not know about it in America unless they like to spend their free time on the FDA website. Okay, thank you. Thanks.